Hey guys, hope you're great. So we're back again and today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Timescale DB and uh, Timescale DB in the relation of the Zabbix, of course. So as you may know for uh, some, some time already, I believe it started in the Zabbix 4.2, the Timescale DB is one of the another supported versions uh, for the Zabbix server, not for the proxy, keep in mind, so only for the server, and uh, the Timescale database gives like a lot of advantages in terms of performance and uh, long term keeping your um, Zabbix installation up and running with, without any problems, and also saving some money and uh, expenses on the disks and your database hardware specs. So first of all, like, uh, what is a timescale DB, right? Uh, timescale database, it it's not absolutely like independent database engine. It's just just like it's mentioned here, you can supercharge supercharge the Postgres. So it basically is an extension on the Postgres database um, on the new versions only. So old Postgres, I think nine something will not work. I believe it started from Postgres eleven or ten. Um, we will take a look into the documentation of the Zabbix itself. Um, the Postgres itself is like super uh, great product and has a lot of the uh, interesting features for the database performance. In any other cases, not only about the Zabbix, but in terms of the Zabbix, we are talking only about two things. First of all, partitioning. Second thing, uh, data compression on the tables, on the historical data tables. Um, first of all, like about a partitioning and uh, what it is, why do we need it? So all our data from the Zabbix, so all data that you are collecting is stored inside a database. If we're talking about a Postgres, then, sorry, if we're talking about a timescale database, then most likely we're talking about a Postgres in the back end of this. So all of this data is being stored uh, for the time period that we consider as uh, optimal for our case, which might be like three months of the history, uh, six months of the history, or maybe even two years. Like it absolutely depends from your needs. But what is important, this data storage costs us, first of all, the disk space, right? So if we're keeping the data for, let's say, one year, it's pretty um, uh, pretty likely that our uh, database will consume more than terabytes of the data, which means that if we have so large database, it means that we're uh, processing a lot of the data outside of the Zabbix. So uh, most likely our disk drives are not just... Uh, old uh, HDDs, so most likely those are SSDs in the RAID, so we have multiple of those. It's expensive to keep these disks for uh, terabytes of the data, so we would want to uh, actually started talking about something else. So yeah, we have a terabytes of the data and uh, who is deleting this data? When the time comes, when the data is older than we want to keep, who is responsible to delete this data? The Zabbix server itself, uh, the housekeeper process, I can even show you here in the CLI. Um, yeah, it's, I have a, a Docker up and running. So well, let me type Docker PS. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. Uh, clean docker ps again like this no still not enough to get it in one line so like this and then i will try to get inside actually it will be visible from here so ps uh, grep housekeeper this one single process for our zabbix server is responsible to clean up all the data that's inside our database but it's older than we want to keep so yeah, this one process, it will suffer a lot. Like, most likely you already had those issues when you receive a trigger that Housekeeper is 100% busy and you don't know what to do about it, right? And um, timely, like sometimes when the problem really gets serious, you might see that the Housekeeper is basically all the time 100% busy. And what's even worse, like as soon as the Housekeeper starts and it goes to... 100% busy, you see that also other processes of the Zabbix start to suffer, like uh, history sinker, which is responsible to insert the data inside a database, like a lot of the no data triggers start to trigger and everything goes like extremely bad. So then we need to improve it, right? We need to make our housekeeper work faster. But eventually, um, 
at the specific size of the database there is no way to improve the performance of the housekeeper you just need to forget it and disable it for the history tables and the trends table and introduce the database partitioning for your database so the background is that uh, for Postgres for MySQL. It is possible, but it is achieved using the third party scripts written by the Sabix or by the community members. So somebody has to maintain those scripts. You must be sure that those are running correctly. It's like third party software script solution which is not the best. But the greatest benefit with the timescale database is that in the timescale DB, the partitioning becomes native functionality. You don't need to do anything. Absolutely no scripts, no internal procedures. You just decide here in the Zabbix that you want to override history storage period uh, for, let's say, 90 days. And everything that will going to be older than 90 days will be automatically dropped by the native partitioning of the timescale db and the difference why this partitioning performs so much better than the housekeeper is because uh, let me make it again my beautiful paint drawing so um, the difference is when we talk about a housekeeper we have one single table of the history one huge table and this one single housekeeper process once per hour connects to this huge table which has some terabytes of the data and scans absolutely all the tables searching for the records that are older than we want to keep and then when those are found it is running a delete statement which again is taking like a lot of the time but if we forget all of this and we introduce partitioning to our system the partition partitions our database into partitions right straightforward so we have a partitions and normally daily partitions so for every day we have one single partition in which we keep the data which is coming from that day so pretty simple and uh, why uh, getting rid of that data which is older than we need is uh, super easy because let's say we have a partition for day one uh, day five then this is partition day 90 so three months and this one is 91st day today and we know that uh, our history retention period is 90 days so this is too old what does timescale db does it simply drops this uh, partition so there is no full table scan of the history there are no delete statements there is just drop partition with according partition name in second and that's it you got rid of the data housekeeper is not running it is not locking your history tables everything runs absolutely fine and out of the box with the timescale db you don't need to run any custom scripts to do that Another thing, history and trends compression. So if you really need to store those uh, months of the history, um, years of the trends, and you have like two, three terabytes of the data, it's huge. It is costing a lot of the performance. It is costing a lot of the money to your business because you need to spend a lot of the money on a good disks. Then there is a solution with the timescale DB and timescale DB only because uh, in a MySQL, in a Postgres, MariaDB, there are no native functionality to run the compression. So here, just choose history and trends click enable compression when you have a timescale db configured and uh, specify for how long um, compress records older than so seven days will be kept as a raw history data and everything that's older than seven days will be compressed and by using a native compression of the timescale db you can make your database from like two terabytes of the disk space to 400 megabytes which is simply huge the only thing which is uh, important in terms of the compression is as long as the data is compressed there is no way to uh, change this data like edit this data add something new in that period but it's not the case with the Zabbix because Zabbix will not try to uh, update uh, or uh, insert something new in a period which was like uh, two weeks ago and this data still can be read by the front end so we can still see it inside our um, 
monitoring latest data dashboards and, and and all the other stuff and again like no third-party scripts no custom solutions integrations whatever else just one checkbox to enable compression and enter uh compressed records older than what date right so absolutely easy two core functionalities for the powerful zabbix in a highly scaled environment native partitioning and native history and trends compression so how to install the timescale db and uh, absolutely easy so warning currently timescale db is not supported by zabbix proxy told you that already so we assume that the timescale db extension has been already installed on the database server if you don't know how to install the timescale db just open this which is a timescale db documentation super straightforward let's say you have a red hat server so rel uh yum or from the sources most likely just yum or dnf just to save up some time right what's your postgres version 12 or 11 so yeah before uh postgres before postgres 11 not supported postgres 13 probably looks like also is still uh yet not supported so let's say 12 and uh yeah there are just a few commands so yum install uh the repository or add it manually and execute timescale db uh dash yes dash tune and it will prompt a couple of questions so you will just enter in the, some uh, parameters click enter and it's done after that we need to run this command from the Zabbix documentation to create an extension if not exist timescale db uh, and uh, import this SQL file so it's already inside of your uh, user sh user share doc I believe so uh, or user doc share I don't remember uh, cat timescale db dot SQL inside your again uh, Zabbix database in your Postgres and that's it like uh, you can of course read a couple of parameters about a timescale db here but basically that's all you have to do to be able to use uh, history and trends compression or uh, and basically native partitioning and uh, don't be scared like of, of using the timescale db in the 4.2 it was uh, experimental right now it is uh, basically fully stable and supported by the Zabbix uh, if you are planning to uh, create a highly uh, Zabbix environment with a lot of the devices and a lot of the hosts I do recommend to actually think about uh, choosing the timescale DB especially because that native compression thing which will save you a lot of money first of all that's it guys so thank you once again for the watching and we're definitely see you in the next videos don't forget to click the like button subscribe and also post some kind of the comment uh, might be some question right and uh, yeah see you in the next videos goodbye